yeah, the mechanical ventilator is not working. We need to try a different ventilator. So we're gonna bring in the oscillator. Yep, already working on it. Well, hello everybody, I'm Dr. Ford, the Naked Dog. Today, we're gonna be talking about the oscillator. And I'm gonna give you some tips at the end as to how you can avoid lung damage on the oscillator. Okay, let's go ahead and sign into the NICU. Okay, good morning, everybody. Why don't we go ahead and get started? So this is a baby who was born full term, uh, who has meconium aspiration syndrome, and the baby has been already on mechanical ventilation for a few hours. The settings have been going up and up and up, and it looks like we're still getting worse. The sats are, they've been sticking around the 80s for a while now. Here's the gas. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we definitely have some respiratory acidosis, and it's getting worse. We've already tried mechanical ventilation. Our settings are pretty up there. So we need to go ahead and bring in the oscillator. Okay. Okay, I'm getting that ready. Uh, what settings would you like to start on? Good question, Rick. So given the current settings that we have on mechanical ventilation, we should probably start at a map of 12. Let's give it an amplitude of 25 and hertz of 14. So why did Dr. Ford choose those settings? We're gonna be talking about that a little bit later, but why don't I explain the oscillator to you? So the way the oscillator works is that it is a magnetic drum. You can actually hear it. There's this round thing that keeps pushing forward and back constantly through electromagnetism. You can hear it as a drum when you hear that. Tuk, 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 tuk. It's basically going forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. What does that mean to the patient? What you're doing with the oscillator is that you have a constant flow that's being pushed by the drum inside. And then when the drum pulls back, it causes a vacuum and pulls that air back. This is why on the oscillator, you have an active inspiration, meaning it's pushing air in, and an active expiration, meaning you're actively pulling air out. The settings of mean airway pressure are essentially that. What is the mean pressure in pretty much all the airways? The more mean airway pressure you have, the more oxygen goes into the alveolus. The lower it is, you can actually collapse. So we balance that out. What about the amplitude? The amplitude is the pressure that oscillates around your mean airway pressure. Pun intended. What does this mean? Basically, if you choose a mean airway pressure of 12 and an amplitude of 25, you're gonna be increasing the and decreasing that drum pressure up and down around that 12. What about the Hertz? The Hertz gives you the speed of that oscillation, the speed of those ups and downs. One important point is that when you're oscillating around that mean airway pressure, the area underneath that little graph, that little oscillation, gives you your tidal volume. Why is this important? We're gonna get into physics, so hang in there. Your wavelength is basically your peak to peak distance, okay? You know, if your hertz are really high, your wavelength is really low, meaning an, one peak comes really quickly after another. Why is this important? A very short width or very short distance means that the tidal volume will be very low. When you have a low tidal volume on the oscillator, you don't have a great ability to blow off CO2. If you actually slow things down, meaning the hertz come down, you're actually going to extend the peak to peak distance or the wavelength, which extends the area under the peak or the curve, and that will increase your tidal volume. You now have more ability to blow off CO2. In fact, one cool tip is that on the high frequency ventilation, the ability to blow off CO2 is tidal volume squared. What that means is that if you double your ability on the mechanical ventilator, you will blow off twice the amount of CO2. On the high frequency ventilator, if you double the amount to blow off CO2, you will two squared, you will quadruple the ability to blow off CO2. This is why on the oscillator, bringing down the hertz, even by one, has a great effect on the ability to blow up CO2. Now that we've talked about all these buttons on the oscillator, there is one button that you could press that would really help me survive. So if you can go ahead and tickle that like button, I would love that. Let's get back to the Nikki. Okay, let's check those settings again. We're gonna start on a map of 12, amplitude of 25, and hertz of 14. Uh, Dr. Ford, I'd love to learn from you. Why did you start these settings on the oscillator? Okay, so great question. You're asking, why do we start on those settings? 
Well, essentially, when you're trying to transition from mechanical ventilator to the oscillator, you have to decide which settings to start with. Let's go one by one. When we're talking about the mean and wear pressure, usually you're going up on the oscillator by two points of the mean and wear pressure that you see on the mechanical ventilator. If you look at the readings coming out from the mechanical ventilator, you can actually see that it says mean and wear pressure. And you can then go ahead and add two points to that, and that would be your mean and wear pressure on the oscillator. Regarding the amplitude, the amplitude is a little bit trickier because there's no real set number. Most people will start between 20 and 25 on the amplitude, but what's more important is actually seeing the wiggle of the baby. Now, I actually call wiggle for the oscillator and I call it jiggle for the jet. You know, I am a dad, so, you know, I'm gonna make these dad jokes. Okay, let's head back to the oscillator. When you're choosing your amplitude, you wanna go ahead and see what the wiggle is of the baby. You wanna see the wiggle pretty much at least in, in the chest area. You do not need to see the feet wiggling, okay? If you're seeing the whole body wiggling, that's a bit excessive. Now, some babies may need it for other reasons, but you don't need to start with that. You at least wanna see the chest wiggle appropriately. And that tells you that at least the amplitude is working within the lungs. Now, what about the Hertz? On the Hertz, you wanna start with the highest number you can up to 15. So for those itty bitty extreme premature babies, we usually start at a Hertz of 15 and then work down if we need to. Remember that as you go down by one point, you're gonna blow off more CO2. So if your CO2 is okay, you want, ahead and you want to go ahead and start 15, even in a full-term baby. If you need to blow up more CO2, you're going to come down each point. You want to go down by one point. Let's go ahead and get back into the NICU and find out what the Dr. Ford and the nurse and Rick do. Okay, nurse, thank you for that question. That's a great question. So we're going to go ahead and start with those settings, and we'll see how the gas responds to that. But what do you think about that? Are you okay with that plan? Personally, I would probably add a little bit more amplitude, but... We'll see where the wiggle ends up. All right, so what a great story in the NICU. Uh, the baby did really well. Great job, NICU team. Now, I told you I was gonna give you one great tip to try and avoid lung damage on the oscillator. One of the things that you wanna do is always try and maintain your mean and weight pressure and amplitude with a ratio of one to two to one to three. What does that ratio actually mean? If you're, for example, in a mean and weight pressure of 10, you wanna have an amplitude of no more than 30 and no less than 20. So the idea is that if you're less than that one to two ratio of mean and weight pressure to amplitude, you can actually cause some atelectasis. The oscillations that are gonna happen around your mean and weight pressure are so close to the mean and weight pressure that you might not have enough of that wiggle to be able to get and blow off CO2 and you can actually get some atelectasis from that. Subsequently, if your ratio is beyond that one to three, you may be oscillating too high above your mean and weight pressure, and now it can be actually causing some damage. It acts essentially like if you're on mechanical ventilation, but just at a really high rate. Keep in mind, when you're on a Hertz of 15, you're actually giving the baby 900 breaths per minute. That is a whole lot. So you don't wanna be given that many number of breaths really stretching the lung. The idea behind the high frequency ventilation is that it's gentler because there's not that big, huge stretch. So anyway, that's a way for you to be able to try and prevent atelectasis and long-term lung damage or even pneumothorax. Try to keep that ratio one to two to one to three mean and weight pressure to amplitude and you'll try and prevent lung damage. So the conclusion for today's video is when you're on mechanical ventilation and you are needing higher pressures and you're having to go up and up on your pressures or you have to blow off some CO2, the oscillator is a great machine, especially for pressures, to be able to increase the pressure while keeping it gentle and decreasing the damage that happens to the lung. So if you wanna know more about the oscillator, the settings that we start with and a little bit more in-depth on the oscillator, go ahead and click on this video right here and I hope you enjoy that video. Dr. Ford, signing out from the NICU. We'll see you with the next video.